Hello and welcome. I'm Riversoft Art, and I'm really excited to talk to you today about another great collaboration between Sickle Yield and myself, the RSSY 3 Delight and IRA to Filament. Now, Filament is a blazingly fast new renderer that's been added to Daz Studio. Um, and it's, it's wonderful for animations and giving you quick previews and everything else. Uh, but there are problems with using filament with older, uh, you know, 3 Delight and iRay scenes. Let me turn on the three uh, filament renderer, and you'll see. So, uh, first thing you'll notice is it's completely blown out. It's way too washed out. Um, other issues is that where did our shadows go? If I show you a iRay render of this. So what you'll see is that there's, you know, some shadows, there's some light on the ground, there's a, you know, a uh, orangish light in the background here, a reddish spotlight there. Um, there's, uh, you can't see it, but there's a ghost light providing a little bit of light to, uh, you know, balance this out. And there's some there's an emissive flame here. So in this flame, there's an emissive light. So it, you know, shines on the floor. It casts shadows, etc. And then when you go back to filament, we've lost all of that. Uh, well, you, we don't have the shadows. It's blown out. The colors of the lights are white uh, because filament ignores the temperature of light. Um, it can't do um, ghost lights, so it can't do mesh-based lights or emissive lights, and so we lose the ghost lights, we lose these flames, etc. So, um, let's go and run the script. So, Immediately you see a startling difference, how much better it can look. Uh, and let me just set it to the defaults. So what you'll see is that, uh, first of all, it's not blown out. Um, the script has adjusted spotlights so they can cast shadows. Um, it adds a shadow caster to help with that for like outdoor scenes. Uh, it can take for uh, it can take the color temperature of a light and change the color so that it, uh, it it approximates the color so it looks like the color temperature. Um, it will take it will look for materials in the, your scene with the names like fire, flame, and candle, and add a point light right above them. It will look for ghost lights, or uh, if you don't know what ghost lights are, these are mesh-based lights, emissive materials, and then their cutout opacity it is extremely low. Um, if you go to the surfaces, um, you'll see the cutout opacity is very, very low. Um, okay, bring this back up. Other things uh, we can do is we can fix issues with some materials. Uh, so we have shaders that will apply to the different materials in your scene. We can add a hair cap to Genesis 8 female and male. This will help with hairs that have lots of transparent layers, which can, uh, in filament, will, the scalp can actually kind of get transparent. So we can add a, a hair cap. So let's look at the defaults in the dialog. So on the first tab, you have the materials and you can scan for all the materials in your scene and it'll display all the unique ones. And then you can find matches. And what this will do is it'll look at the material names and try and match them to different names and apply different shaders included with the product. And then you could click apply presets and it would go and convert all the shaders. But um, I'm not going to do that yet. 
Uh, I'm going to show you this tab, which is the material defaults presets. And this is where you uh, it defines the uh, regular expressions to match to a name, a material name, and then the shader that they want to use with it. And you can double click and edit these. You can add your own, etc. Um, I'm not going to talk more about that today. Uh, now I want the part I'm really excited to talk to you about is the options. So the options are where you set lighting options and uh, environment settings, and it tweaks them. And we have these can be in real time. So we have filament preview. If this is checked, it turns on the filament renderer if it's not on. And if live preview is checked, it actually changes the scene based upon the uh, options in this tab. If I turn this off, you will see the filament renderer without any of these options set. So let's go through all of this. So the first thing you have is you can update the environment. So at 100% intensity, you see it's all blown out. It will you know, pull it down and you can obviously change it in real time. So let's pull it down quite a bit. We're actually going to make this one pretty. Actually, let's make it 9%. Let's go back to the defaults, which are pretty good. <clears throat> Um, I'll get to this uh, option in a second. Other things we can do is with the latest uh, DAS Studios, they've started adding tone mapper options and environment options, and this will automatically add them to scenes if they are not there. And you can actually reset the tone mapper to some defaults. Now, the update spotlights. So this will update all of the spotlights in the scene. You can, you know, uh, brighten them all. So in here we have this spotlight and this spotlight. So you can, you know, crank them both up. Um, <clears throat> you can, um, by changing the ray length multiplier, you change, uh, you can make it so that you can see the shadows from spotlights in your scene. So as I push this down, you'll notice it's the ray length of a spotlight acts as a cutoff. And this will change it so you can see it. Now, I mentioned earlier that filament can't show uh, the light temperature. It doesn't affect the color of the light. By default, the script will look for lights with white color in the scene. And if they're white, it will actually then look at the light temperature and change the color to approximate that light temperature. So as it's below 6,500 Kelvin, it gets orange and red and warmer. And if it's above 6,500 Kelvin, it gets bluer and colder. And you can also force this. So if you'll notice this one, as I do it, it overwrites the red color of that scene and goes to its light temperature. Um, so this, in case, you know, these, this is in the cases when you want to force it. But I don't want to overwrite that red color, so I will uncheck that. Um, so similarly, we can update the point lights and we can make them stronger or less strong. And uh, let me pull this up a little bit. Um, so you can change the point lights multiplier. You can change its, you know, so force it to take the uh, colors in the scene. Um, I'm going to turn that off. You can have the script search for ghost lights and change them. So this ghost light, this, and change it into a point light. So now 
with this option off, there is no ghost light in there anymore and it's not contributing. So let's put that back on and it, uh, you know, we can crank that up or not as we want to. We can also have it, uh, the script search through the scene for the materials with flame, fire, and candles, as I mentioned, and add these point lights to it. And you can see the three here. If I turn this off, they disappear and it becomes so flat and no light being uh, added to the scene from it. Uh, let's definitely turn that back on. Now, finally, another way to help add shadows into your scene is we can add a shadow caster light. This is a distant light um, that, you know, can just add, you know, uh, so it helps add shadows. And it won't work in this scene really too much because this is an interior scene. But if you watch the edges of these uh, columns here, you'll see it change and um, up there um, you know take take away and add to the scene and you can see it it's here at the origin and you can change that as well so it uh, you can change its multiplier as well uh, well in this case you're changing the flux now if there's already distant lights in the scene the script won't add a shadow caster, but uh, it you can it will update the colors of the shadow caster to you know or of the distance lights so that they are using the color temperature. Um, for the shadow caster, you can it comes in and you can say oh if it's blank it's saying I want uh, to use the first spotlight in the scene its orientation for my. Um, shadow caster but we can then change it and it's changed to this one over here and its orientation or you can actually just set its um, you know values as you want let's go back to that um, and then there's that add hair cap now the final um, property I wanted to talk about is Say you like the balance of the light in the scene. You know, you're like, okay, I've tweaked the point lights. I like that multiplier. I like the spotlight multiplier. But you can still see it's still blown out. So we can actually use this global light multiplier to push all of it down and up globally. So, you know, let's get that down. And... You know, you could do that. And let's turn down the intensity. And there we go. Um, so once you're happy with everything, you click accept and it will go change all the materials. It's changing the lights and everything else. Now with a complex scene with lots of materials, it can take a while to go through. So at this point, I'm going to jump cut to the end of this uh, end of the updated script. All right, so the uh, script is finished and you can see the result of the work and it looks so much better now. Um, if I undo it, you can see filament without the script and redo it see filament with the script just a startling difference well thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this i hope you will uh, get our product and you will love it as much as we do you have a great day